Hey booktube, I'll try and do a little update just to keep my hand in. I'm uh, gearing up towards changing locations. I say that in every video, but this time it's true. This is an Airbnb in Saranda, Albania. I'm moving, day after tomorrow, I'm moving to Vlora, Vlora, Albania. It's got a longer beach. On the way there, I'm going to stop at a, I'm hoping if it works out, I'm going to stop at a UNESCO is that how you say that? UNESCO? UNESCO? Uh, heritage site. I'm not going to attempt to say the name of it here because I'll, I'll mangle it. Um, but maybe I'll get some pictures or some video from there. It might be interesting to see, even though it's not book related. And I'm just trying to figure out what I've been doing with my time in terms of entertainment, reading. Not that much. I haven't got that much read. I did fi finish. The next book in the Valentine movie detective series by Lauren D. Estelman. I read uh, Shoot, which is based on a character, which is based on a character model. Characters modeled after Roy Rogers and Dale Evans, and uh, takes him into pretty seedy ter territory. So he didn't use the real characters' names in that. I really enjoy the series. Not too popular. Not too well known. Uh, at least to judge from what I can find online about it and, and what the numbers do on the videos that I've talked about it on my own posts, which are very small, but that's fine. Uh, I read a ton of Wallace... These don't count for my 100-book challenge, but I read a ton of Wallace Wood comics. I went down a rabbit hole. Uh, of the great artist... In fact, there's a and there's a biography of him called the second greatest comic book artist. I don't know, since I didn't read it, I don't know who the first would be. Probably Jack Kirby, or depending on everybody, Steve Ditko, or somebody like that. Pretending on your preference, but this is one of them. This is a, a comic strip he did called Canon. Probably ran about three or four years. Uh, you can kind of get the in the. I don't even remember now. I guess the 60s. I mean, it was reprinted in 2018 from Fanagraphics. But from that, uh, I can't show you any other pictures because I had to return it to Hoopla. But from that cover, you can sort of see that it's a Bond-style pastiche. Naked girls, guns, dead soulless eyes of a hero. Or maybe that's a villain there. I don't know. It's a... It's kind of a he's kind of a born type character. I really enjoyed them. They're really uh violent and action oriented sex and violence and action oriented. Uh they were it was a comic strip that was create black and white strip that he created to sell to I can't remember the name of it now. It's a military newspaper not run by the government, so it wasn't like the Stars and Stripes, it was a competitor, I guess. Difference. It was catering to uh, American service people of the of the Cold War era, and like I say, it was sort of uh, born like in the in the sense that this this guy Cannon, this character Cannon, similar to if you've seen the movie The Manchurian Candidate, he gets that kind of treatment from the Chinese. When he's kidnapped from the from communist China, he gets uh, brainwashed. They turn him into it. And this is like all very. This is like the first two panels. You know, this is like the prologue of the whole strip. Uh, he gets brainwashed. He gets sent back to the United States to be a killer. He gets uh, caught. They try and deprogram him. They're not able to deprogram him. The U.S. intelligence. So what they decide to do instead is reprogram him. And to be a killer for them, so he's got, you know, his, he's, uh, and they're, they're, they feel bad about it. There's a whole panel where they said, "Well, we're sorry, we're doing this to you, Cannon." So he's just an, he's just a soulless assassin guy, and uh, and he gets on, he gets sent on these various missions uh, where he he meets up with the 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 villains who had brainwashed him in the first place and, and other people, you know, there's always a, a sexy female spy trying to kill him. There's a couple of different ones. And 
runs about three years, ends rather abruptly, but it does end as a series. You can kind of read it as a, as a novel. It's a uh, it's cool stuff. He is a great. I read a, a bunch of others by him too. He did a lot of EC sci sci-fi books and uh, let's see if I can see that one. Um, here's another uh, selection of, from Fantagraphic books of his early sci-fi stuff. All these like these creature feature type science fiction stories. He did a lot of them with Harry Harrison, who I didn't know started out as a cartoon as a illustrator himself illustrating stories to tell her before moving into becoming a science fiction prose novelist harry harrison wrote make room make room which was uh, adapted into the film soylent green if people remember that it's a really good film uh, he has a character called bill the galactic hero which is kind of a parody of um old action-oriented sci-fi Bill the Galactic Hero has he's so tough he has two right arms uh, what else did Harry Harrison write the Death World uh, books which I haven't read but I've got them so I might read those on there's a couple sci-fi events coming up on booktube so I might read a couple of those I turned on this video today what was it six minutes ago to talk about one thing specifically which was and which I haven't even mentioned yet and I'm still leading up to, um, but it's probably the title of the video. The other day I was I was watching Cat's channel, Cat's Novel Adventures. I enjoy her channel a lot. She had some recommendations for weird stuff she'd read. And uh, I'll link to that video. Uh, she read uh, Clive Barker's story in the, in the hills, in the cities, I think it's called. Which is a really famous twisted story. She recommended on there, or she reviewed on there, The Toll House, a story by W.W. W. Jacobs, author of The Monkey's Paw. Um, the Toll House is a ghost story, so I looked up the version she recommended, listened to that, enjoyed that a lot, as that brought into my algorithm uh, a movie of adaption of the Edgar Allan Poe story, The Mystery of Marie Roget, um, which I was going to watch, but it got too late. It was an hour long, and I thought, well, okay, I'll do, I'll, I'll next time I get a chance, I'll, I'll read the story, Mr. or I'll find an uh, audio version on YouTube of the story, Mystery of Marie Roget, and then I'll watch the movie, because the movie's only an hour long. And I'll review those and compare and contrast those. All the all the versions. First thing, so I I did go and try and do that. First thing I noticed is that the story, the short story, Marie Roget, runs two hours, which means it's probably about nineteen thousand words long. I know that because of. Don't ask me how I know that. I just know that when uh, when they estimate the length of audiobooks in terms of word count, approximately one hour of narrative equals 9,500 words on the page. And that's a fairly uh, long story right there. So a book like, say, The Great Gatsby is about 50,000 words. That's about a five-hour audiobook. I believe. If somebody wants to check me on this, they can really embarrass me in the comments if they want, if I'm completely wrong on this. But anyway, so I thought, well, I don't want to listen to a two hour audiobook of Marie Roger and then read a, and then watch a one hour movie version of the same story. And plus, the, I had sampled a couple of the audiobooks and I didn't like any of the readers. I have, a, I have an issue with that. I, if I can't, I, if I don't like the reader, I can't do it, which is why I can't read, I can't handle a lot of those uh, LibriVox recordings where, bless their heart, people are just volunteering their time to do that. But it's hard to listen to. So I, I found it. Fortunately, I had it on my Kindle. Like everything else I have on my Kindle that I didn't know I had, I have this uh, a complete edition of Poe, which I probably bought for like 99 cents a long time ago. Very, like, very plain text like an exciting version of the complete tales and poems of Poe. I read every single Poe story 
because I had a book like that uh, when I was a kid where it had the complete short stories of Poe. It didn't have the poems in it, I don't think. Uh, like sort of pseudo classic looking edition that they used to have, like a big green book with like sort of gold embed, embedded writing, but really cheaply done that kind of fell apart after I read it and I did not remember so I know I read it because I know I read that book cover to cover but there was a lot of story you know when you have everybody's story when you have somebody's complete life's work there's going to be good stories and bad stories so I didn't remember the mystery of Marie Roger so I thought that'd be a fun one to read I knew it was a, a C. August Dupin story Actually, I didn't know that. I found that out when I was looking up the story. Uh, I, th I knew there were only three C. August Dupin stories. That's Poe's detective hero. He used a different word. Detective wasn't used in that, in, in that sense in those days, I don't think. He called it a tale of ratio nation, I think. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, too. Anyway... He had this series character, and I knew there were three stories. The first one was The Murders in the Rue Morgue. The final one is The Purloined Letter. I thought the third one was The Gold Bug, which is another Poe story, and one I remember pretty well. I thought somehow C.R.S. Dupin, Dupin was in that story, but he's not. The third story, and it's the middle story in the trilogy, if you will, is The Mystery of Marie Roger, and it's the least famous of the three. For good reason. It's not that good. It's it's worth reading, though. Uh, it's it's almost uh, more worth reading about than it is worth reading. Because now the f the first story uh, that he wrote of this character, that Poe wrote of this character, "Murders in the Rue Morgue," is you know very pulpy. It's very um, uh, you know borders on. Uh, horror. It's very lurid. Uh, there's a couple okay movies. There's one okay movie about it and one not so good movie about it. There's probably others. You know, it's quite absurd, actually, when you sit down and think about it. The, the solution's quite absurd. And then, skipping ahead, skipping to the final story, which Poe thought was one of his best stories and thought it was the best of these Ratio Nation stories. Uh, that he did the purloined letter, which is really the one that 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 people remember and that sort of spawned the whole genre. Well, there's elements of all of these stories that spawned the genre of detective fiction, classic detective fiction. He wrote these before Sherlock Holmes was invented, and Sherlock Holmes does mention C. August Dupin in I think it's I think it's in the study in Scarlet um, to explain to Watson that he's that his method is much better than C.R. Stupin's method and but he's the first of these kind of uh, gentleman detective guys who make it their business to who's very smart and and uh, doesn't seem to need money and and is friendly with the police but isn't a professional detective you know these amateur these amateur detectives it's like the beginning of that genre and Poe of course was American and he set these stories in France and the, and the character Dupin is France and is, is French so they were meant to be romantic stories it's an American writing about a, a, you know an exotic place relatively exotic at that time Paris and these lurid murders uh, murders in the Rue Morgue I won't spoil it for you but it is kind of based on some stuff that was happening and then we get to the second story the the one I'm allegedly been talking about here for the last 14 minutes that I thought I was going to make this video entirely about was based on an actual case of a woman named Mary Rogers and there's part of it that that reminds me of that film. I think it was a movie. I, mean, I think it was a uh, book originally, but I know it as the film Picnic at Hanging Rock, where there's uh, that that just occurred to me, which is a great movie you should see too. But Marie Roger or Mary Rogers, uh, 
uh, it's a person who disappears. There's a big manhunt. She reappears. Okay, everything seems fine now. And then later, sometime later, she is murdered, or she disappeared, or she, or she is found dead. So that it was a huge sensational case. I think it happened in. I should know because I just read all about it, but it happened in New England or or, or New York or someplace. So Poe goes ahead and he very thinly disguises this Mary Rogers murder as Marie Roger and moves the action to Paris and sets it a little in the past. And all because he thinks he has a theory of how he can solve the actual murder. And this, uh, I I suppose this is a thing that's still. I was going to say this is this seems kind of bizarre to me. Uh, the way it's done, so close to so close to the truth, but I guess that's kind of like what they do on L.A. Law and stuff. Though now they think not L.A. Law, Law and Order where you'll be watching an episode of Law and Order and it's this fake story and then but you know exactly who it's supposed to be. Like if it's a, if it's supposed to be Jean Benet's murder or something or you know, you can tell exactly what headline they ripped it from. So I guess it's the same thing. The story uh, according to Wikipedia, Baudelaire called it a masterpiece. He was a big promoter of Poe, of course. Uh, generally considered the weakest of the three. Maybe that's why I didn't remember it. The solution at the end is... It's really not up to the, the cleverness of the purloined letter or the, or the uh, abs absurdity of, of, of Murders in the Rue Morgue. It's a bit like... Uh, Dupin goes to the police. He says, "Well, you probably probably this person, this type of thing would have happened. And if you check this out, then you'll probably find out who did it." And, and then there's like some hand waving about like, "Hey, we can't. We're not going to really reveal all the details of how they caught the murderer." But then they caught the murderer based on what Dupin said, but based on his brain deduction. So it's it's well written, of course, as Poe's stories always are, and. The first half is better with that strange sort of double thing of a person disappearing and then seeming to return and everything is normal and then getting murdered anyway at a different time. So I guess I will have to watch that movie at some time. Of course, it's a three-star movie like everything else. So it's probably not even that good. I would have heard of it before if it, if, if it was that good or, and they would have made other versions of it if it was that good. So that's my little review of... The murder of Marie Roger. Is it the murder or the mystery? Oh, the mystery of Marie Roger. Which gave me a chance to talk about those other stories which are better. J definitely read Murders in the Rue Morgue if you haven't and The Purloined Letter. Uh, and then, then you might as well read this one too. You gotta, you gotta have the whole set, right? The trilogy. How often can you read the, the complete series of a famous detective series, the the complete works of a famous mystery novelist, a famous mystery writer's most famous detective, and only have to read three short stories. So you can knock them off in a day. Uh, of course, Poe's better stories are even shorter and and more powerful. I th I still think I yeah, can't. Uh, Casco Amontillado is probably my favorite story of all time. Uh, Poe's story of all time. One of my favorite stories of all time. It has to be everybody's, I think. And The Black Cat, another excellent one. The Premature Burial. Uh, what's the one about the heart? The Telltale Heart. That one. <laughs> there was, a, mo there was a, a short version of that, probably like a student film or something that I saw when I was a kid that they played on on Creature Features back when I lived in Reno, Nevada when I was a kid. They showed it, they interviewed, um, I think they interviewed the filmmaker, and they showed it in between like the horror movies on Bob, on Bob Wilkins' Creature Feature. 
very good version of the Telltale Heart. It scared the shit out of me. I don't know if I'd read it at that time. Um, it's a fantastic story. That probably is the technically the, the greatest story, but the uh, Cask of Amontillado is so good because it just it gets right to it. And apparently, according to John Gardner, and I'm sure other people have said this too, he Poe invented the story that was all climax, all denouement, no setup. It's like a, a Cask of Amontillado begins like, I'm not even going to go into all the slights that this son of a bitch, this Fortunato has, has done to me that brings me to the point where I'm going to murder him because I, I don't even have the time to deal with that shit and, then, and that's all you need, you know that this guy this character the narrator in the Casco Monteado really hates this guy he's going he's gonna to enact some horrible uh, revenge on him and which we, we know, so those stories are always worth reading I had something else I wanted to say about Sea Ox Dupin. Oh yeah, it's when you when you read it, it's there's a narrator which I like to imagine is Poe himself. They just call him an unnamed narrator. The the Sea Ox Dupin stories are narrated by a confidant, a, a friend, and uh, an associate of the of the great detective. So much like Watson and Holmes, except we don't know the name of the person who is chronicling the. Dupin stories, and I like to think of it as just a version of, of Poe himself, fantastically, you know, improbably just living another life in Paris for some reason, where he meets this great detective and decides to tell his stories. I, there must be pastiches of C.R. Dupin. I would think there are. It's not that unknown of a character. Anyway, I think I've talked enough about this subject to to wrap it up. I'm definitely working on my newbie tag. It's not that I'm not. It's just that I want to do that when my when I'm alert and everything. Because probably because those those tag videos get more views and and these short story videos, I don't have to worry about it at all because like nobody clicks on them. Anyway, uh, I am still having fun. I hope you guys are too. I hope you're reading great stuff. Just occurred to me that also uh, The Mystery of Marie Roger fits for March Mystery Madness, one of the reading prompts this, this month, so I'm still on track with that. And that's it for now. This is Pete. As always, keep reading, keep watching.